Okay, are we on? Is this working? Okay, welcome everybody. Um, thank, you, thank you so much for coming to join us for this very special talk event with the wonderful artist Tatsuo Miyajima. Um, I'd also like to thank Arthur Tanaka, who's assisting us with the most seamless translation I think I've ever witnessed. He will be channeling the spirit of Tatsuo. So I thought it would be easiest if I lead the discussion in English that the responses will be translated from the Japanese. Uh, we have a selection of images that are just going to kind of roll in the background, so we're not going to sort of stop them and talk in response to them. Um, and I think we'll talk for around about 45 minutes and then we'll open up for questions. So hold on to your questions. Um, Tatsuo will be very happy to answer. And we have a lot of ground to cover. Can I just check, has everyone had the chance to look at Tatsuo's exhibition yet on level three? Is everyone sort of right across it? Good, okay. Um, so I hope that what we're gonna do is really delve into that practice in a lot more depth, open it right out for you. Um, and discuss some pretty meaty questions around life and death, because really time, its passage, and cycles of human mortality lie at the core of Tatsuo's art, and have done for some 30 years now. So we're gonna talk about pretty small stuff. <laughs> uh, and on our way, we're gonna take a detour through the history of Buddhism, I think. Um, that's gonna be an interesting topic. Um, and we'll open it outwards from there. Uh, but first of all, I'll just say a couple of words about the exhibition itself. Uh, Tetsuo Miyajima's wonderful exhibition, Connect With Everything, is his largest and most comprehensive exhibition to date. It's on the Level 3 galleries, as you know. It's part of the Sydney International Arts Series. And it does give you a pretty detailed insight across 30-odd years of Tetsuo's practice from the later 1980s right through to the present. Now, I'm sure that many of you will know Tetsuo is best known for his light-based works, his works using light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. Um, and those are really, I guess, the kind of center or crux of the exhibition, but I really wanted to open it out and show you the depth and breadth of his wider practice, too. So, you know, you'll see painting in the exhibition, you see some, some wonderful, wonderful drawings. drawings, there is Tetsuo's, Tetsuo's sketchbooks, sketchbooks, which I have to say, along, along with those drawings, have pretty, pretty well never, well, they've actually, actually never been seen, seen before publicly, so, so it's, it's quite, quite an extraordinary and quite intimate insight into, into his working work process. process. You'll also, also see some of the performance videos in the exhibition, and we're going to talk a little bit around performance because it kind of bookends the exhibition and also Tetsuo's practice. Uh, working very early in his history with performance and returning to it again since the 90s through the present. So there's a lot we have to cover. Uh, but that's why I think we might first start with a little bit of personal background. Um, now you were born in 1957 in Tokyo. You live and work in Ibaraki. Ibaraki Prefecture is just the next uh, prefecture to Tokyo. It's about an hour, an hour and a half on the train. So I always think you have the best of both worlds. You have the residence and studio in which to have space and time to think and to make your art. Uh, but I'd like to just talk about some of these big questions in your art because time and its passage really form the key theme and within that a consideration of time in relation to both our individual lives and our lives as a community. Could you perhaps talk a little bit about your interest in time and its passage for your work? First of all, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Thank you. 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 Um, I come at the concept of time rather indirectly. Um, what I do think a lot about is living and dying. And in that context, I think a lot about people and 
ultimately when you think about those things then you have to start thinking about the passage of time as a very important element. Hmm. One of the things that you use to express this idea of the passage of time but also human life cycles is a counting cycle. We see numbers in all of your work across the media um, and interestingly you always have these counting cycles one up to nine and back down again or sometimes it could be nine down to one and back up again. Uh, but interestingly you never use a zero and I wonder if you can just talk about this important moment which you know it could be like a pause. I sort of think of zero as being the intake of breath but it's also that brief moment, that moment of death and transition between lives. Um, zero has quite an interesting history in terms of uh, sixth century India and I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about zero as a concept. え、まずあの、ゼロというのは、え、今言ったようにし、属性というのがあって、so the concept of zero as we have a started art in 6th century India, the word for it is sinya uh, in Sanskrit, and that got translated into the Western into a concept that we understand as um, nothingness. Um, but um, what it is, is that it's actually a concept that embodies two uh, contradictory opposite ideas. One is that it's like the numinos, the ephemeral and everything, at the same time as denoting uh, absolute absence and nothingness. So the nothingness says, um, I understand it is, it's like a field from where life emerges, but it's also the field into which life goes back to. So even though it's nothingness, it's actually packed full of energy from which things spring. So in Japanese, that nothingness is translated as ku, which is the character for air. Um, but that nothingness is uh, full of potential. さらに言うと、えっと、私たちが毎日こうやって活動して、日中活動して、夜疲れて眠って、次の日また so we are active during the day and we do what we have to do in our lives and then we go home at night tired and we fall asleep. And while we are asleep, our consciousness, consciousness is not fully active as it is during the day. And then the next day we wake up full of energy and we go out there and do whatever we work again. So this cyclical nature is pretty much how I view life and death as well as the day and night cycle. And so when we, when we are asleep, it's a bit like death, that we're not fully conscious, but there is a consciousness that's there. And that's how I'm, I'm looking at life and death. Okay, so Tatsuo, what we might just do is backtrack a little now and just talk about your personal history, uh, because I think it's really important in terms of understanding this very wide-reaching consideration of human mortality within your art. Um, I'd like to just touch on your childhood a little um, in Tokyo because I know that you were you were quite a sick child. Um, you, you have great health, and in fact, you had kidney disease, um, and you spent a lot of time in hospital. And I find that, you know, as a teenager, and I find that really interesting and revealing when thinking about your practice because, you know, confronting one's mortality in such a kind of real and close way and at such
して、重要業者にするときに、重要業という設定で、半年間入院をするという設定にしました。まあ、そ,れそれで、えー、と同じ病気で、えー、同じ病室の子どもたちが死んでいくのを茶葉を、また私も見ていたので、非常にその死というものが、自分自身、身近な存在として考えるようになっていました。When I was 12, I was hospitalized with a very bad alpha, so I had half my stomach removed.、Um, and when I was 14, I had、uh, renal inflammation, so again, I went back to the hospital. And while I was there, I was in a room with other kids who had the same condition, and they died. So、um, that made me think a lot about what dying is, and death as a consideration has,、um, has always been very、uh, familiar and close to me. This is why I was in the hospital, and 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 I was in the h o s えー、とてもこう前向きといいますか、えー、少しでも時間を無駄にしたくないというような、まあ、生き方あまた本をたくさん読んで死について勉強したり、まあ、そういうティーンエイジャーを過ごしてきたんですね。So after I left hospital, fortunately I survived.、Um, I became very interested in reading philosophy、um, to do with death, but also I wanted to take an active interest in life and living because Um, every moment of life became very precious to me.、Um, and so, as a teenager, I involved myself quite a bit with uh, reading uh, philosophy. Well, I guess that leads me to the next point, which is you know, you know, at the end of your teens, moving into your early 20s, you know, you enrolled in Tokyo University of the Arts or Gedai、um, to study art. In fact, I remember you studied oil painting. Um, and you know, you explored performance.、Um, but another thing that you've talked a lot about is that you know, by your early 20s, you confronted something of a spiritual crisis.、Um, and again, it was this whole thinking around、um, life and death, but also thinking about the purpose of art, you know, why are you making art? You know, who is the art for? Is it for you? Is it for someone else? And I wonder if you could talk about the role of Buddhism within this、um, thinking about your practice. えー、と僕があの大学に入るまでは少し時間が何回か受けて起こったりしてすごく時間がかかったんですねでまあその間にえじゃあ自分がアートをやる意味何のために自分は生きているのかっていうようなまあ非常に根本的な問題にぶち当たっていきましたまあその時にえまあ僕の友達とかそういう近所の人たちそして僕の両親もえブディズムをやっていたのでえその話を聞いたりして23歳の時に僕自身もそれをトライするようになったんです。So, um, in my process of applying for Gedai,、uh, I had a few runs at it and didn't get in.、Um, and during that process, I actually hit a fundamental issue as to what it meant to be、um, an artist and what my art was going to do and what it was going to be. And、um, around 23,、uh, people around me, as well as my parents, introduced me to. Sorry. Before turning 23,、um, I was introduced to the thinking of Buddhism, but at 23, I actually decided to try out、um, the method of living Buddhist life. I was able to do Buddhism as a result of the fact that I was able to do it as a result of the fact that I was able to do it as a result of the fact that I was able to do it as a result of the f えー、ブディズムの信仰の中心的な命題なんですね。で、そ,そのことに、えー、自分自身が自信を持てるようになったっていうのが一番大きい収穫だと思います。So the, the greatest thing that I got out of Buddhism is that、um, we all have、uh, possibilities within us and we all have talent and we all have the desire to do things, but I found it a lot easier to trust in that potential within myself thanks to Buddhism. Um, it's like finding an affirmation of why I'm doing what I'm doing, and、um, that was my greatest reward、uh, for turning to Buddhism. Okay, well, I'd, I'd quite like to just talk about your early practice, both within and coming out of Gedai,、uh, because interestingly, you studied oil painting,、uh, but actually, performance and I guess kind of bodily. 
uh, vocal expression were really the direction in which you channeled your practice early on. Um, and interestingly, I know you've talked about a range of influences for you, um, you know, some of the American performance art tradition, you've talked about artists like Bruce Nauman, Vito Aconci, but of course there's also a very rich Japanese tradition associated with performance, I mean both theatrical as well as artistic, I mean no theatre being one example. Um, could you perhaps tell us a little bit about these early performance works, sort of what they were? and why you decided that this wasn't going to be the direction you would pursue down the track. えっと、まずあの、僕がえっと、パフォーマンスを始めようと思ったのは オイルペインティングの歴史we might need to break that down a bit for you, Arthur. <laughs> so a lot to remember. So um, I, when I entered Geida, I entered Geida as a student uh, for uh, oil painting. And um, the thing about oil painting, of course, is that oil painting has a really long history in the West. It's very deep. And in the Orient, in Japan, it, it doesn't have um, a long history. <laughs> So um, what that meant was, well, I wanted to be an artist that could actually be an artist that presents my work to the world. And to do that, to take myself to the cutting edge, I wasn't going to be able to do that with oil painting because no matter what I did, I would be downstream in the wake of other great artists who have been practicing oil painting in the West. So I turned to performance art because performance art allowed me to go somewhere where it's relatively new even in the West and by uh, taking it up I could possibly uh, communicate something to the world as the art form itself was developing. に人を加えることっていうのが実はアートではないかっていうふうにその頃考えていたんです。ですから自然と人、自然に何かこう引っかき傷を作るように自分自身の行動、アクトがその自然に対して何かこう引っかかりを歴史を残すというか存在をこう
and the rain would come down and the ground around me would get wet but of course I'd leave a dry mark and I'd get up and I'd have the video camera record that dry mark of where I was. Uh, that's the kind of work I was doing at that time. Okay, well I know that one of the things we've talked about a lot is that um, there was actually quite a finite cycle to this period of your practice. Um, you know, these were often impromptu performances, you know, they would just sort of spring up unannounced in public spaces, as you said, it could be by the beach, it could be in a railway station, could be in a street. Uh, really, whoever was there would witness it, often quite a small group of pe people. Um, and you've talked about the fact that it did make you question, well, why am I making this work? Who's going to see it? Am I making it for me or am I making it for other people? And this was really a turning point in your thinking and you started to sort of question, well, I need a different kind of medium that perhaps has a, a wider agency, um, a more permanent footprint um, through which to express the ideas. Now we all know, you know, you then moved into working with light, with LEDs, but I wonder if you could just talk about that transition into using, I guess, more concrete sculptural forms, which you still call performance objects. えっと、まずあの、そういうパフォーマンスをやっているんですけれど、やっていたんですけれども、え、そういうパフォーマンスっていうのは、え、その時に一瞬だけで終わってしまって見ている人たちがとても少ないんですね。ですから、え、非常に残念に思っていて、な、あの、自分ではなくてパフォーマンスを引き続けるようなもの、そういうオブジェを作りたいというふうに、それから考えて、え、機械を使ったり、ライトを
<laughs> I'm not the show. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is very good. <laughs> um, so I guess this idea of a medium that is um, constantly moving and changing, um, that contains luminescence or a kind of life force um, that can be programmed by you or can kind of run autonomously was really a kind of ideal way to express these concepts, which are, again, very um, informed by a Buddhist philosophy, this idea of, you know, constant change within life, the idea of connecting um, each individual within a community, but also this idea of continuing forever, the idea that, you know, there is this life and death and regeneration cycle, but also that humanity kind of continues cycle after cycle, generation after generation. Um, I think um, what might be quite nice now is actually just to talk about one or two of the key works. And I'd also like to explore the question of colour, because I'm sure you've all noticed in the galleries, the colour palette for LED technology is really specific. I know that when you started making these first customised LED objects and environments in the late 1980s, really only red and green LEDs were available on the market. Um, it was only in the kind of early to mid 90s, for example, that blue LED technology, then white, became available and you kind of scooped that up pretty fast too and started to weave that into your practice. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about the meaning of colour in your practice, because I think that's very, very important and it has huge sort of cultural and spiritual associations. And then we'll move on and look at a couple of concrete examples. えっと、まずあの、色について それぞれあ、I uh, and in Japan, there's been a lot of thinking about color. So I, I do want to incorporate those meanings into my work. That is very important. Tatoeba,ma,今回発表された作品で色がとても重要になっているのは、え、一つはあの、え、タイムトレイントゥザホロコースという作品です。で、あの作品で、えっと、列車の中にぎゅうぎゅう詰めになっている uh, for instance, the work Time Train to the Holocaust that's um, presented at this uh, exhibition, the trains contain uh, LEDs colored blue, and that blue is in reference to the blue from the Star of David, because exactly um, that's what I want to get at. Um, which is to refer to how Jewish people were packed onto the trains and sent to their deaths. Mm. I mean, when we look at the meaning of colour, as you said, I mean, there's a whole discipline devoted to the study of colour, you know, in art history, it's chromatology. Um, you know, in terms of red and green, I mean, red, you might think about fire, you might think about danger, maybe it's, um, you know, a life force green, you know, we might think about new growth, about nature, the natural world. 
But as you've just touched on, blue is a particularly symbolic color because, of course, it's the color of the ocean, it's the color of the sky, it's the color of universe, and some people would say it's the color of infinity. It's kind of depthless or borderless color. Can you talk perhaps a little bit about the use of blue in your work and its associations? えー、とブ,ルーブルーの色を使い始めた最初の作品というのは1996年なんですけどちょうどその時に、まあ、あの市場に出てきたから、えー、すぐ使いたいということで、えー、それはもう、えー、空のイメージで使っていましたで今回展示してある作品の中でもメガデスというのがブルーを強く打ち出した作品の一つなんですけどそれは、えー、遠くから見た時の宇宙のえー、星の瞬きといいうイメージで使っていますそれはあ,のあらゆる人たちの生と死が、えー、無数に散らばって遠く離れて見た時に、えー、ブルーのようなそのまるで星空のような情景を浮かべてもらいたかったからなんですね。I started using blue in 1996、uh, when it first became available in LEDs. Uh, initially, I was using it as an image for the blue sky, but with a work like Megadeth, I see the blue more as sort of like the night sky, and it's all the stars in the star field、um, blinking, really. And it's each and every person's life as seen from a great distance, but they come together in this, in this blue、uh, light.、Um, and that's the kind of image I had for Megadeth. Mm. Well, let's just talk a little bit about this work. I mean, Megadeth is, I guess, one of the highlights of the exhibition. It's that massive blue room that has floor to ceiling blue diodes that wrap around you on three or four walls.、Um, now, this was a work that was originally commissioned in 1999. Um, for the Venice Biennale, and you were chosen as the artist to represent Japan that year at Venice. And I remember that the commissioning curator had asked you to cast your eye back across the 20th century and comment on the century that was just coming to its close. Now, some of us might look at the 20th century and think, okay, you know, it's the century of technology, of computing, of communications, of, you know, the World Wide Web and so on. But for you, I remember you talk actually about it being a century of war, destruction, and this loss of life on an absolutely huge scale. Can you just unpack Megadeth a little for us? I know. まあ、ほとんどレイチェルさんが説明してくれたんですけどね。<笑>あの、anyway <笑>。It's pretty much as you just described it, so. <笑> There you go.Anyway. <笑>えー、<笑>あの作品は、えー、20世紀をあの総括してくださいっていうコミッショナーの要請で、僕自身が考えたあの作った作品なんですけどそれはどういうことかというと20世紀はメガデスの世紀であったっていうふうに思いました大量殺戮の世紀それはなぜかというと、まあ、原爆があったし2度の大戦があったしホロコーストがあったしさまざまなテロで殺戮が行われた、えー、それも、えー、一個が吹っ飛ぶような人数の殺戮が行われた世紀だったっていうことなんですねそれを批判するために無数のえー、生と死があの、えー、展開されてそれが突然消えて真っ暗闇になってしまうという習慣を作って、まあ、20世紀の大量の殺戮の時代というのをもう一度考えていただきたかったそういうまあ作品なんですね。So when I was commissioned, obviously、um, they asked me to do some kind of critique or some review of the 20th century and what really Um, came to me about the 20th century was just how much killing there was、um, in two world wars,、uh, the atomic bombs,、uh, the terror acts,、um, the countless wars. And really, there was, it was a century of mass destruction and mass murder. And that's what really stood out to me. So, what I wanted to do with the work is describe a condition whereby people are living their lives at their own rate, doing their own thing, and suddenly something happens. And everyone dies, and that's when the lights go out. So the work actually represents that moment of lots of people sort of being cut down in the middle of their lives. Okay.、Uh, 
Um, we've got just a couple more minutes, so before we finish, I just want to flag one last aspect of your practice. Um, we've really talked about the works that you and I guess you alone are um, conceptualising and creating for museum displays, um, but actually you've worked a lot with collaboration and with communities both within and beyond the art museum. So I wonder if you can talk about collaboration within your practice and also the role of chance, because of course not everything is predetermined within your practice. えー、とコラボレーションというのはあの最近95年ぐらいからあの始めていることなんですが、えー、私のカウンターガジェットっていうのはスピードを調整することができるんですね速くしたり遅くしたりそれを一般の参加一般の人たちにセッティングをしてもらうっていうあのコラボレーションの仕方をしていますでそうすることで、えー、例えばあの直島の作品なんかもそうなんですけど小さな島で158人の人たちにタイムセッティングをやってもらったんですねそういうタイムセッティングをやってもらうことによってもっとその現代美術分かりにくい現代美術が自分のこととして自分ごととして何か捉えてもらうようになったつまり一般の人たちにとってもあこれは自分がセットしたカウンター僕のマイカウンターだっていうふうにすごく身近に感じてもらえたんですねそれで、えー、とてもそういうコラボレーションの仕事っていうのをたくさんそれからするようになってきました。Uh, my collaborative work started in 1995,、um, and what happened was at Tokushima Island, I got the local people to set the speed at which the counter counts down on、um, the counter gadget that I use. So everyone would pick their own speed at which the nine to one countdown happens. And what happens then is that people get invested in their little counter. It's their experience, and it's their experience of participating in art that they take on board in their lives. And that's very important. So、um, the benefits of collaboration are actually that I get to communicate the experience of art with the people、um, that I'm working with.、Mm. えー、とそれからあの偶然性についてなんですけど、えー、つまり一般の人たちがそうやって入ることで私がもう全くコントロールできない例えばジュネーブの時は222人の人たちに参加していただいたんですけど全くカウントしないずっとカウントしないカウンターガジェットを作りたいって言った人がいたんですよでそうするとですね成り立たないわけですよね作品としてただそれも分かったって言って受け入れて全くカウントしないやつを1個だけ作ったんですでもそう,すそういう,こう偶然性っていうかなそれを受け入れることで僕の作品っていうのは深い広がりが出てきたんですねそれはとてもいい経験になっています So、uh, I did a collaborative work in Geneva to follow on this thing Um, and to talk about the accidents that can happen in my work,、uh, I had 222 people participating in this process of picking the counter speed. And someone came up to me and said, Look, I want my counter not to count at all. I just want it to stay at zero. And of course, that goes <laughs> against the grand concept of the work. But by taking on board that request, I had this one counter that didn't count down at all, didn't move at all. So by doing so, I'm taking on board people's ideas and it actually increases the depth and breadth of my work. So I value those kinds of interactions and accidents、uh, greatly. Okay, well to conclude, I guess, you know, Your art is about cycles, but your art practice has also travelled quite an interesting cycle itself. So I'd just like to finish with performance, where you started your career and where you've picked up once again since the 1990s, because there are a couple of really beautiful performance videos in the exhibition where rather than seeing these diodes doing the counting process, you see human beings, actors, or 
yourself actually articulating that voice, counting up, counting down, and you know, plunging your face into a bowl of liquid at the moment of zero. Can you just perhaps talk a little bit about these performance videos and what they mean? Eh, I know, I know, performance in the world, the counter voice to you, she is that there, so they were, you don't know, so no, eh, ekitai. それは生と死に関係する液体なんです例えば水とかワインとか牛乳とかそういうところにカウンティングをして、えー、と自分の言語、えー、自分の母国語でカウンティングをしてそれであのゼロの時に、えー、顔をつけるというそういうパフォーマンスを至るところでいろんな世界中の至るところで、えー、いろんな言語でやってもらっていますそれはなぜそうするかというとみんなにですね、その参加した人々にカウンティングして、そして生と死というものが繰り返されていくと,ということを追体験してもらいたいからなんですね。で、実際に本当にあの牛乳のパフォーマンスをやっているときには、なんか本当に死にそうになった人とか、なんかあそういう人も出てきたりとかして、えー、なんかこうパフォーマンスを終えた後は、お風呂から上がったようにさっぱりとしてみんな帰っていくんですね<笑>。それがとてもあの印象に残ってますけど。So we we do this、uh, performance called counter voice and it's important that people articulate in their own language the countdown and then dunk their heads into the liquid and the liquid is invariably liquid that is closely related to our ideas of life for instance water or wine or milk. And so they count down, and at the moment of zero, they put their faces into the liquid. And、um, we've, we've had people who've actually、um, felt like they were going to die at the moment of their death. <laughs>、um, th and but most of the people who do this, they kind of do it and they re experience the process of life and death through this little、um, act, really. And they kind of go home quite、uh, refreshed by having participated. <laughs> It's very interesting. I thought some looked a bit traumatized, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> If you look closely, there's one girl who's doing the red wine who looks like she's going to cry. <laughs> Uh, but Tatsuo,、okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of the videos actually shows you. This is a recent video. I think it's quite a sensitive one.、Um, and you're actually performing the countdown and you're placing your face into a bowl of, I would say, irradiated water because we can see Fukushima behind you. This is a very sensitive one. 実は日本ではあまり見せていません。それはなぜかというと、福島を扱っているからです。まあ、皆さんご承知のように、5年前の 3.11 の時に大震災と津波があって、福島の原発がメルトダウンを起こしました。それで、多くの人々が避難をして、今も帰れていません。で、えー、と僕自身はあの柿の木プロジェクトっていうので、原爆を批判する作品も作っていますし96年にはフランスの核実験に反対する意味でムルロアのムルロアで実験したんですけどねムルロアの水を汲んできてパリで6人のパリジャンパリジェンヌたちにカウンティングをしてそのムルロアの水に顔をつけてもらうっていうパフォーマンスをやったんですね。Um, so <laughs> this video work is、um, it's actually quite sensitive, so it's not really been shown a lot in Japan. But it is in reference to the、uh, Fukushima accident that happened in the wake of the great earthquake five years ago and the tsunami that followed, whereby the、uh, nuclear reactor、um, melted down.、Um, in '96, there were the French tests on Muro Muroa Atoll. So I actually got water from Muroa Atoll and did the same. Uh, performance art in Paris with the local、uh, Parisians. And so、um, that was also in a similar vein of thought. I've also got my own anti nuclear work, which is the、uh, Kakinoki project, which is a persimmon tree project,、um, which, which stems from Nagasaki、um, and the bombing there. This is the case of Fukushima. なんていうのかな核実験に反対したようにその核の問題というのをもう一度考えたいというふうに思強く思ってで
あの時フランスの核実験はフランス人でやっていただいたので今度日本で起こったことは日本人でやる僕がやらなければいけないと思って、まあ、そこにいらっしゃる長澤さんに相談をして船を出してもらって、えー、そのあんまり立ち入っちゃいけないと言われていた福島の原発の、えー、20キロ先だっけ5キロ先まで船を出してもらって、えー、パ,パトロール船が見張りしててこれ以上入れないっていうところまでギリギリまで行ってそしてそこの水を汲んでパフォーマンスをしたんですね。So when、uh, Fukushima happened,、uh, I was struck with this feeling of, you know, why, why does this happen? Why does it have to happen this way? So just as in 96, I asked the French people to participate in their nuclear issue,、uh, I realized that I had to participate in my own、uh, in Japan. So I got、uh, a local Mr. Nagasawa to、uh, get a boat out. We went out five kilometers out. Off the shore from where Fukushima reactor is, right up to the point where they have a、uh, Coast Guard vessel that wards people off, and we went right up to the borderline and got the water. Okay, well, look, we're in pretty good time now, and I think we should just open up to some questions from you. I'm sure you've got questions、uh, for Tatsuo, so any questions to start? Give you a mic. One of the things that、uh, strikes me about your work is your humility as an artist, which、uh, I think is in stark contrast with a lot of other contemporary artists who you soon become aware of their ego when you see their work, particularly installation work.、Um, and I'm wondering whether I possibly it's explicable through your belief in Buddhism or your, your, your following of that. Of that、uh, Thinking, but also the use of darkness in your installations. I'm keen to understand why darkness plays an important part of your work.、Um, my wife and I saw one of your installations at Naoshima、um, years ago,、um, and the first thing that struck me was first of all, humility and um, 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 an artist who's trying to get you to slow down, to stop thinking. えー、とまずあの例えば仏教ではよく言われるのは人のために明かりを灯せば自分の足元も明るくなるっていうことが言われるんですね。でどういうことかというと人のために何かをしてあげるという生き方が自分,を自分の生きるっていう道をまっすぐに進めてくれる。そういう正しい生き方なんだっていうことを教えてるんですね。In Buddhism,、uh, there's this thinking that if you set a light for someone else, that light will also light your way.、Um, so that if you do something for the benefit of others, then that will lead you towards a righteous path. それであの僕自身がアーティストとして、えー、とアートワークを作っているのは、えー多くの見る人たちに自分自身に自分自身の中の、えー、可能性だとかそれから自分自身を発見してもらいたいと思ってアートワークを作っているつまり僕自身をね何かこう表現しようと思ってあまり作っていないんですね。So as, as an artist I'm not actually trying to put myself across two people to begin with Uh, what I really want to do is for people who see my work to、uh, experience art in such a way that they, they feel the possibilities within themselves,、um, that, they that they get an insight into themselves. So it, it's not me expressing something that's very delineated to the audience. This is what I'm saying. 僕が言っているのはアート・イン・ユーという概念を言っていてそれは見る人たちが実はアートワークの半分以上を作っていてアーティストはそれを助けるだけつまりアートワークを見る人々がいなければアートというのは存在しないんだむしろアートは
、えー、見る人たちの中に存在しているっていうことを言ってるんですね。So for 10 years I've worked with this concept called art in you and what it really comes down to is that a work of art is only、uh, functioning if there is an audience who can actually experience it. So the important thing is to get a work of art out there in such a way as that someone could experience the artistic experience within them and it's only then that art is complete. Okay, we had another question just up here. Yep, okay. For some of your more、uh, original designs that don't have a brief towards them, which comes first? Do you design the aesthetic and then try to divulge,、uh, uh, read into what it could mean? Or do you come up with a concept and try to find the best way to、uh, represent that? のコンセプトをあの作って、えー、そしてそのコンセプトを表現できるような、えー、つくあの素材を吟味して、えー、作っています。I start mostly from the concept first actually and once I decide on the concept then I start selecting the best materials that would best、uh, express that concept. そうでないとえー、と作りながら探してしまうことになりますのでゴールが全く見えないんですねつまり、えー、とマテリアルにアーティストが引っ張られてしまうっていう状態になってしまうのであんまりそういうことはしてないですね。So I don't do the thing where I try to find the concept within the process because、um, I, I tend to lose sight of my own goal posts if I do that. What's important for me is that I have an idea and I'm trying to express something in a very、um, definite sense. And so I, I don't want to go towards a direction of the materials dictating, dictating to me what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay, we have、yep. one last question. I'm intrigued by your all pervasive use of the seven segment、um, display of the numbers. You rarely, or except for a few sketches, use、um, the numbers drawn as you would in handwriting.、Um, is there a symbology to you in this specific layout of the numbering? あのえー、とこの8の字というのはとても、えー、インターナショナルなデザインなんですけどすとてもよくできているデザインですべてのナンバーがここに入っていますつまり、えー、これですべてのナンバーが表現できるしこれを消すことで「く」先ほど言った「し」というのを表現できます。This, uh, the figure eight that is, that we use, it's actually,、um Quite a great design because within the actual、um, pieces you can actually depict all the integers that you need to, and when everything turns off, it is very representative of the concept of nothingness. So, the Japan is the eight of 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 the e 同時に存在しますね。So in, in Japan, culturally, we perceive in eight a certain kind of perfection that leads out to the infinite. So that's also part of it. Well, look, I think、um, on the note of time, your great subject and our lived reality,、uh, we are right on time. So <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help that.、Um, so <laughs> so I'd like to ask you all to join me in thanking the one and only Tatsuo Miyajima and also Arthur Tanaka. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eike. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anaka-san. Thank you very much.